So in our first section, we'll talk about access to finance. And I think talking about the capacity piece earlier and also ecosystem, I think that kind of brings that all together. And, and Jeff, how does BOVA respond to unprecedented fiscal support from government, possibly competing with bank debt offerings and increased risk of lending to MSMEs due to the pandemic and also a decline in global trade volumes? I mean, look, did the bank lend less? You know, it's it's a really good question. And, and we'll start with the you know, the support from governments, I think first and foremost, I think that's been a really important boost to the global economy. I think, um, and I think I, I think probably intuitively, we don't think about it as, as competing with banks. We think of it as complementary. Um, and we actually think of it in a couple of different ways. I think from a financing perspective, I think it's complementary from a, you know, the, the other part is the operational perspective where, you know, the, the governments and in some cases, multilateral organizations, et cetera, aren't necessarily set up operationally to be able to fund multiple parties like this. So banks actually have to end up sort of using its rails to provide the run the liquidity through its systems to be able to provide this financing. So I think that's where it becomes important for us on a number of different levels, you know, the complementary financing, but also you know, the operational know-how to be able to sort of distribute the funding to where it needs to go. And I mean, it's going to sound like a one-track event here, but this is where I also come back to, you know, you'd asked about the lessons learned. This is yet another reason why being digital, lower friction is incre increasingly important for the bank community because the banks have, to a large extent, been called upon in many cases to operationalize that funding and support that's coming from the governments and the multilateral organizations. So I think, you know, that and, and, and along that, you know, more of that will get to the MSMEs if there is lower friction on the mechanical side of that funding distribution. You know, banks in particular inevitably are required to do levels of diligence on its counterparties, and that often will require some friction and some sort of mechanical portion of our throughput. And that's where, you know, the more efficient we can be on that side of it, the more then we can start to distribute more of that funds to a broader environment, including more of the MSMEs. You know, I think to a large extent, you know, we always think about the, the trade finance gap, right? And we think about how the funding is not necessarily always getting down to the MSMEs who need it. Yet on the other side, there are tens of billions of dollars of capital in the market that is trying to get to, quote, trade finance in whatever capacity that might be, portfolios of receivable, et cetera. So the question isn't really a supply and demand. It's more of a facilitation question. How can we get that capital to the MSMEs and just the places that need it in general? And that's where I think the facilitation, the operational side, the mechanical side of what banks do becomes even more important, perhaps even more important than the funding side. Yeah, and I think that 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 operational piece is is, is quite important. And Madhav, how can this help customers reduce? Because ultimately, it's all around the cash conversion cycle, right? It's how do how do you get your customers to? How can you help your customers reduce days payable outstanding? And and what can Bank of America do to help help clients there? You know, look, uh, the interesting thing what. Um, you know, what Jeff also mentioned is, you know, what you also see with this evolution of sort of the, you know, strengthening sort of the working capital and the cash conversion cycles that you're talking about. Also, you know, the market has evolved. So now you not only have just banks uh, being party to these transactions directly with the corporates, but you also have fintechs that are more aggressively uh, you know, in this space, you know, uh, uh, capturing and originating some of the data. Uh, you have um, non-traditional banks, you know, maybe it's private equity players and others who are also tapping into the same data. So the pool might be bigger, but it's a lot more fragmented. So, you know, what that means for, um, you know, banks like ourselves is, you know, how do we frictionless sort of connect to many of these pools to be able to provide uh, you know, sort of these financing mechanisms, right? I mean, because what has evolved is, you know, before it used to be maybe one single, uh, you know, pool with a program with a single corporate connectivity, but depending on the sector, you know, that has become multi-bank, 
maybe some fintech, some bank. So for us, um, you know, other than, you know, being, uh, being able to provide the financing, it's how are we able to uh, provide frictionless connectivity to corporates in many different ways because the asset origination pools are not in one place. So, uh, you know, the faster we can connect, and as you know, banks, you know, historically, we're not agile. We're, you know, it takes us longer to connect to multiple connectivity points. So that's where it becomes a lot more important. How do we partner with players like, you know, IBM or other fintechs to be able to, um, you know, tap into these pools uh, to be able to provide, you know, the, the various sort of financing tools uh, like you're mentioning, right? So it's kind of like this confluence of both the digital and the actual sort of, you know, the financing needs have sort of uh, converged and it's more and more important to be able to address both. Otherwise, you're going to get left out of the pool, basically. And- and Chris, I, I, I know, uh, you know it, what we can see right now is a bit of a digital island, as, as Mather quite rightly pointed out. Uh, you know, you've got multi banks, you've got corporate clients, they want to kind of connect to everything. I'm going to ask you a more challenging question, which is what about the smaller banks that can't necessarily you know, afford IBM services, perhaps to to allow for that connectivity? How do you operate in a way that is open for everyone? enabling us to solve that problem as a whole rather than as, as individual bilateral relationships? That is um, a very tough question. Um, <laughs> however, uh, IBM platforms are there to, um, to provide services, to enable, to lower the operational challenges and to lower the friction. So our cloud, FS Cloud, has been designed to bring that confidence and to bring the consumption-based like uh, topics to forefront and to enable everyone to participate in this, in the benefit of our cloud and our technology estate. Thank so you. Uh, yeah. what we will do uh, going forward, right, is um, not only uh, help the banks, big banks like B of A, but by enrolling the FinTechs on our platform, our platform becomes open to participating, any participating bank, so they could participate in any transaction on consumption basis, so there is no huge capital spend to enter the digital world. Yeah, I, I think that's a that's a that's a really good answer, and and you know I hope we can we can see that come to come to fruition. And 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 Madhav, I assume also some of your corporates have have responded in various ways to the to the pandemic. What have what have you seen? Have they been more demanding? Have they requested specific product updates? And and how has Bank of America responded from an SCF perspective? Um, I'd say it's. Um... Look, it's it's multidimensional. So you know, one is uh, you know, as we talked about, they themselves are evaluating uh, the overall sort of disruption and so nearshoring, offshoring, what components to move. That then drives um, uh, their needs for digitally transforming their own supply chain, and how uh, and that um, kind of then has an impact on their banking partners and other partners to provide you know, digital data to them so that they can consume and make better working capital decisions uh, um, and, and the like, right? So, uh, you know, by, by uh, them advancing their digital agenda really forces the banks also to be on the front foot. And in this case, uh, us, um, much towards sort of, you know, Jeff was mentioning earlier on. So this kind of forces the agenda to be much more uh, digitally nimble and kind of accelerates, you know, that process. I think the other piece that's come to the forefront is, with so much focus on digital and data, uh, clearly there is a focus on APIs. Um, you know, so how uh, can we, uh, you know, uh, connect with our uh, corporate, you know, banking partners, you know, more through um, uh, this, um, uh, you know, sort of API consumption-based business services, if you will, and that can, you know, that then drives, you know, other challenges um, that both sides need to address, which is kind of cybersecurity. You know, how does, uh, how do you kind of uh, protect the data you know, in flight between the corporates and us? So these are kind of the questions that our corporates are asking of us and they're looking for us to kind of provide the necessary comfort uh, that we are at the forefront of it and that we are addressing. And I'd say the other third, sort of the, the uh, evolving space beyond APIs, you know, what we've kind of termed it as really embedded financing. So, 
We want to remove the friction even further. So APIs are better than historical legacy platforms, but they still require like a mini technology project on the corporate side, on the banking side. But the embedded finance is really, how do you really even further simplify the friction and removing that and embedding really within their core procure to pay process in their ERP uh, at the origination so that they can connect with um, with a partner like Bank of America to simplify, right? So there's many ways in how we're kind of evolving and, and looking um, at, at uh, you know, some solutions and sort of better connecting with our you know, corporate partners, if you will. The, how do we protect the data in motion? Um, we look at ourselves as the mechanics, right? How do we, how do we bring the entire technology complexity uh, to a usability format to what you asked the patch before, right? Uh, to anyone in the supply chain, whatever the supply chain is. Um, and I think the, the concept that we at IBM rolled out is the concept of hybrid technologies, hybrid cloud, hybrid mainframe, hybrid uh, ability to access the ISV network, and most importantly, to protect that data in motion with a set of different technologies from mainframes to cloud to satellite that reaches the entire global network of, of banks, suppliers, and anyone who wants to participate in this network, because supply chain is really in trade finance, exemplifies really what the world will look like tomorrow. So um, Jeff and Madov really are at the forefront defining um, what the digital supply chain will look like for almost every institution, every Fortune 100, 1,000, 2,000 clients out there. Thank, thank you very much, Chris. So I think now to kind of close that introductory part, we'll go into a little bit more detail on technology in this next section. What should the world expect from a bank? Perhaps a bank dedicated to meeting the challenge of change. A bank that honors the business environment and the natural environment with equal passion. Providing people and businesses the tools and insights they need to succeed. And offering people and communities the resources to flourish. A bank that recognizes that economies fluctuate, but values don't. And never forgetting, our only ambition is to help you fulfill yours. What would you like the power to do? 